Hey, everybody. Welcome to New York State Manufacturing Now, the podcast that's powered by Fusub. I'm your host, Steve Melito. Today, we're talking to Karen Kima Maxwell, the founder and owner of Kima's Creations in Albany, New York. Kima's Creations is a woman-owned business that makes wood purses, clutches, backpacks, and travel bags. The company is gaining national attention, and its handcrafted products have beautiful African and African-American themes. In 2019, purses from Kemus Creations were featured at Harlem Fashion Week at the Museum of the City of New York. Most recently, several of Kemus Creations appeared in episodes of TV's General Hospital. You can see them on the web by visiting shopkema.com. Kima Maxwell, welcome to New York State Manufacturing Now. Thank you. You made me sound so good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are good. You are very accomplished. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, Kima, tell us about yourself. How did you become interested in fashion and why sewing in particular? It is all webbed into my DNA on both sides, parental and paternal. My mom was a seamstress in Panama, which is where I'm from, and so was my grandmother. Then I have a slew of elder cousins that were seamstress, tailors, so on and so forth. So I didn't really have a choice. (laughs) It was fate, huh? Exactly. (laughs) Well, what made you start? Kima's creations then? What was going on in your life at the time and what need did you see in the marketplace? I graduated from fashion industries in Manhattan, New York. So sewing has been, like I said, it's been a part of me for quite some time. So I've been sewing since middle school. I was doing clothing for my kids and then, you know, house stuff, curtains, pillows, blankets, that type of stuff. And it got to the point where I found myself altering clothes for a lot of people, but doing it for free. And one day someone was like, you know, you could get paid for this. And I was like, oh, really? I can't? Hmm. All right. I'm going to start charging folks. And (laughs) Kima's Creations became a thing. Um, Didn't ever expect to be at this point. I found where I enjoy making bags more than clothing and watching my daughter go back and forth to Albany High with this big duffel bag on her very little back, I'm like, or shoulder, I'm like, how do you make this work for you? And then I found my love for bags, and here I am. And here you are. So tell me more about the handcrafted wooden purses that you make. How do you make them, and what are they made of? Ooh. Loaded question. If you were to ask me the same question that you just did about wood, I don't know that I could give you such detail. I don't know when and how wood became a thing in my life. I just know that I say this often enough and people think I'm playing, but I'm not. (laughs) I'm probably undiagnosed ADHD. I can't sit still for very long. I can't stay on one thing for very long. So I keep finding different ways to elevate my craft. And wood came along somehow, some way. When COVID hit, I got a grant from the community loan fund. And for the longest time, you know how they catch you with those commercials and those infomercials. So Glowforge was on my vision board. I'm like, one day, one day. And then the grant came along and they was like, you have to buy equipment. Well, I think this is an opportunity to buy equipment. So the Glowforge came into my life and... I was able to create better wood projects. At the time, I only was envisioning handles, wanted wood handles on my bag. Now, with the Glowforge, I can create whole bags with wood. I use all sorts of different wood. I started practicing with MDF because that's what Glowforge sends to you, and it's easy to mess up and not feel bad about it. And now I've moved on to working with walnut, um, some plywood walnut, actual walnut. Right now I'm working on some white oak, which, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So I have some white oak that I'm working with right now. So I just, I don't know, I play around with them and kind of sit down and come up with all these different ideas of what if and what if becomes realizations. That's amazing. So believe it or not, I know a little bit about the Glowforge. It's a laser cutter, right? It is. 
And do you come up with all of the designs yourself, the files, and then input that information? Sometimes. And then there are files that are out there in the system, on the internet, on Etsy, that you can just pay for and do whatever you want with them. Do they really want you doing that? Probably not. However, there's literally um, something called living hinges. So the more cuts you put in wood, the more flexible wood becomes. And there are amazing folks on Etsy that have created living hinges designs. And once you create a shape, you just drop a living hinge in, put it into the Glowforge, and you have a whole bag, believe it or not. Add everything else afterwards. You do your staining, figure out where you're going to put your locking mechanisms in any which way that you're going to design them or add anything to it. That is amazing. I think you just gave a lot of hope to a lot of Glowforge artists out there, and there are many. I hope so, because you can definitely, for the price we pay for Glowforge, please make your money. Please. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) So tell me about the patterns that you've come up with. They are beautiful. They are inspired, I would say. Where do you get the ideas from? So... The bag that was on General Hospital was a leather bag with an onk for the handle. And for the longest time, like I I kid you not, since about 2016 or so, I had been working on that way before I even knew what a Glowforge was. And if I was to show you what the original bag looked like, you'd be like, ma'am, did you did you actually take a picture of this? But I was so proud of it at the time, and it had nothing to do with wood. It, it actually did, and it was all fabric. And I kept playing with it and playing with it, and then started doing it by hand by wood. And if you know anyone that plays with wood, wood is not exactly the easiest to work with, especially when you don't know what you are doing. So... The steps that have taken place for that bag is just freaking amazing to sit and watch the different pictures that were taken all along. But I just had this idea of an onk being the handle of a bag. And I from 16 on to 22, it it came to life and it literally took that long and having access to a laser cutter made it so much easier for it to be clean. But in high school, I had a best friend by the name of, well, she's still in my life, Kashena. And she always had on onks. And at that age, I I didn't know what an onk was, the symbolism of it or anything of that nature, other than, wow, that looks like a cross. That, you know, and it's kind of pretty. I really like the curve on the top. And I ended up naming my bag after her because she was the one that introduced me to an Ankh. So the bag is literally named the Kashena Oss Ankh bag. Um, And I sent it off to California again. What if? And what if became a realization with Vernay Watson Johnson, who played Will Smith's mom on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I'm going to correct that because a lot of people say, oh, she was Aunt Viv? No, she was Aunt Vi. She played the mom, not the aunt, <laughs> on Fresh Prince. And I sent it out. And next thing I know, I got an email was like, wow, your bags are amazing. I would like to put it on General Hospital. Please, please do that, ma'am. I would appreciate that. And it ended up on General Hospital. So that's how it started. You just took a chance. You just did it. You didn't say, well, they're going to tell me no. You just did it. I sent out four bags to California. My aunt knew someone that worked in her production company. She has her own, you know, company where she teaches acting and dancing and all of the arts that she is familiar with. And my aunt knew someone that worked in her production company. And I was like, I'd be fine if she just stood in her bathroom in the mirror and took a picture with the bag. I'd have been okay with that. But she, I received the email and I, I was ecstatic. I was screaming. I can see why. Mm-hmm. So what did it do for the company once you had this exposure? Did you get more orders? Did you get requests for interviews? Did other things happen? Yes, I ended up on um, having a news clip on Channel 13 locally. I had an influx of orders that came through. My website had a boost, which, by the way, you guys did. Thank you so much. It raised a lot of awareness of my brand, um, and it was 
was funny because I was in Hannaford local grocery store and a lady just walked up to me and she was like, I know you. Um, hello, I'm sorry, I don't I don't remember you. And she was like, I know you because I saw you on the news. Congratulations. <laughs> it was just really weird, but it felt good at the same time. And I was like, oh, thank you. And then she just went on about her business. So it, You're it, famous. I, mm, I don't know, but I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there. Well, that's good. Well, we did a little bit of work for you on your website at Fuse Hub, and it was a lot of fun to work on. Part of what is on your website now is a configurator. Can you talk about what that is and what it does so that people that want to shop for a bag can maybe use it? Absolutely. First and foremost, before I even go into that part of it, I have to say that when I sit in all these many places with different companies and business owners and all that stuff, the first thing folks try to come at you with is, do you have a website? Do you have a website? And I've said this before, it's like, who did your website once they see my website? And I'm like, Fuse Hub. Was like, can I get the information for your website? Absolutely. It's Fuse Hub. So thank you guys, because <laughs> I get more compliments on my website, or I should say I get as much compliments on my website as I do on my products. So you guys are amazing. Um, the configurator. Previously, I had a brainstorm that... I wanted to have one-on-one -on -one relationships with my customers, but I wanted you to come with an idea. So there was a lot less talking and more creativity going on, right? So I created in my head <laughs> what I could not bring to life and did the very best I could to explain to you guys, this is how I want it to look. This is what I want to have happen, but I don't know how to make this happen. And you guys were so amazing and so patient working with me to bring to life the aspect on my website where you can go in, you can click on a bag and say, yeah, I don't really like the look of this in black. Can I make it brown? Can I make my hardware look in this color and literally see those changes happen before your eyes? And I can't say enough about working with Fuse Hub. Like, I didn't think that I would be able to ever have that be a realization on my website and how much it takes away from having very long discussions with customers and trying to say, well... Let me send this to you and take a look at it and see what it looks like. Let me know if it's okay. It's so much better to see it in person happening before your eyes. Thank you guys so much. This is me you bowing. You are most welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you are most welcome. And since you're being kind enough to give us a shout out, I want to give a shout out to Kim Lloyd from Fuse Hub, who is yes. really the genius behind this website development effort and Kim did a nice job. She did. She's amazing. So Kima, tell me about where you think the business is going to be in five years. Where do you want it to be? I have an idea, but I'm afraid. Honestly, <laughs> I in my head, I want to be like, I want to have my storefront and I want to be selling and have the business be sustaining on itself. And I want to do all of that. Right. And then I'm like, oh, hell. What does that mean to have a storefront? And what does that mean to be there and creating and selling at the same time and actually having all this staff that does all this stuff? So the good news in where I want to be is closer than five years. The fear, it goes way out to the five years, though. <laughs> 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 so there's the community loan fund um, that services the local communities here in the Capital District. And they are, I was going to say remodeling. They're not remodeling. They're building. They're getting bigger. So there is a building that is being put up to service further out, right? Within that building, there will be three storefronts. And currently, I'm in the running to be one of those storefronts. So for hopefully, five is coming down to about one. But All again, right. the fear is still is still way out there for five years. <laughs> the fear is still way out there. <laughs> so in five years, I see myself running a successful storefront. That's excellent. I suspect you see that 
fear and just say, get out of the way. I haven't got time for you. I got too much to go. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm trying. I'm trying. But sometimes the anxiety kicks in and you just like, "Mm, let's work through this. Let's work through this. I'm telling you, therapy works. Therapy works, people. (laughs) It works. (laughs) So if this store happens and it's successful, would you want to do them someday? And let's just dream big, like New York City, London, San Francisco. My dream, oh my God, would be to walk or no, not me walk, dear God, no. To have my product be on the runway in Milan and be up there with even on a smaller scale. Of my, like I just want my products to walk a major runway. And not to say that Harlem wasn't one because I have had that experience, but I would really like for someone to look at my logo and be like, I know what that K means. And I actually have had a conversation with her. Well, let's hope that there's somebody who's going to listen to this that will know that. So tell me about the Harlem Fashion Week experience. It's pretty competitive to get into, right? Yes, it is. It actually is. Um, And again, the way things happen in my life is kind of crazy. So there's a store called Pacific Trimming in New York City in the um, fashion district that when I tell you, You could get lost in that store for hours. You could get lost in there. So it's a notions store. And I'm in the store and I'm online. And the way the store works is like notions are all of the little trinkets and things that you use in making a product, right? Like your your clasp, your D-rings, your zippers, all that stuff. That's notions, right? When you're picking the way the store works, you have to have either a little baggie or container to put all these things in because the prices are not on the items. The prices are on the drawers for the items. There was someone in there from out of town who didn't know how it worked. And they literally brought, I kid you not, hundreds of notions and dropped it on the counter. So then the folks in the store were running around. Where'd you get this? Where'd you find this? The price for this? How many of these? Right. But there's a long line. So there's me who's double parked. And then there's this young lady behind me that is also waiting. And we start talking. We look at each other like, oh, God, I'm going to get a ticket. She's like, yeah, I was supposed to be out of here a while ago. And we just start having a conversation. And she goes, so what do you do? What are you making? And I'm like, oh, I make bags. And she's like, oh, I make clothing. So what what kind of bags do you make? So I pull up my Instagram and I'm showing her. And she goes, I have my own business. Do you collaborate? I never have, but it shouldn't be that hard. What do you want to do? She's like, I'm putting on a fashion show. My name is Yvonne Junell, and I'm one of the owners of Harlem Fashion Week. Wait, what? She's like... Yeah, I would like to have your bags in my line. I'm currently working on the Malcolm X product line. And and you want my bags in this line? And she's like, yeah. I kid you not, that's how that happened. My bags was in her line. The following year, I put my own line on the runway. I love it. It's a great story. Great story all around. Kima Maxwell, it's been so good having you on New York State Manufacturing Now. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. And again, I cannot speak highly enough about you guys. Well, we've enjoyed having a chance to work with you. This won't be the last time. I'm telling you, when that storefront opens, I may come back. Like, Steve, please, please, All right. You let me know. (laughs) You let me know, and I'll be there. No problem. All right, fantastic. So we've been talking to Karen Kima Maxwell of Kima's Creations in Albany, New York. If you'd like to find this amazing company on the web, and I encourage you to do so, visit shopkema.com. That's S-H-O-P-K-E-M-A.com. Then if you're an inventor or an entrepreneur, would you like to be like Kima? Would you like to have a tangible product that you can make and sell? Then you need to get your product concept or prototype to a place that's ready for manufacturing. But how do you get started? If you don't know what to do, just visit www.fusup.com and click the Speak to an Expert button. It's right there on the homepage. Then fill out the short online form and let us know what you need. A member of our Manufacturing Solutions Program will be in touch sometime within the next business day. So we hope to hear from you soon. On behalf of Fuse Hub and New York State Manufacturing Now, this is Steve Melito signing off. <laughs>